I've been in the Bitcoin mining industry for oh seven or eight years now. And uh, it's it's funny, you know, a lot of people find out about Bitcoin just, uh, you know, through Bitcoin itself. But I, I actually found out about Bitcoin through Bitcoin mining first. Um, before I was in the industry, I was a Internet marketer, a web developer, uh, you know, serving clients, helping them with their their digital marketing and um i stumbled acro across this one website really plain really bland website right and i was like you know what i think i can help that company i went to their twitter social media and i was like okay yeah they need help so i actually reached out to them and lo and behold it was an asic manufacturer uh called how long mining you know it, it turned out it was just really like a, a white label of in a silicon at the time making a, a bitcoin miner called the dragon mint t1 and uh but anyway so that that was my uh foray into the mining industry is actually working for a bitcoin mining equipment uh company and then from that i actually learned all about bitcoin and how wonderful it is and uh you know so i i i've i like to tell people well you know a lot of people like bitcoin because they are anarchists or libertarians right I think maybe I more became an anarchist or a libertarian because I got educated about Bitcoin, if that makes sense. So, so yeah, I've I've been I, around for a few I, years. I would almost, I, I, in, you, you maybe you can sit there and uh, maybe agree, disagree, but I, it's like not so much like an anarchist, but an anarcho-capitalist. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, like I was saying, you know, I've, I've been around in the industry for a while. I've seen a lot of things. Um, I've been trying to grow my company as a, a Bitcoin mining equipment broker. I, I basically um, transitioned from working for that company I, at the time. This was like 2018, I think, after the big Bitcoin bull run in 2017. You know, that made and broke a lot of people. Um, but I was like, okay, this company can't sell any miners anymore you know bitmain was selling their s9s those were like fresh on the market s9s they were selling them for like 300 bucks a pop oh, which man. meant nobody else could sell miners right like nobody could compete with that because bitmain yep. had hundreds of thousands of these miners available that they were just offloading and trying to flood the market with um you know and then shortly after that you know they came out with the s15 or actually the s11 was a, a small run and the s15 people might have heard about and then it was the s17 but um so they they were offloading all of their old equipment and and trying to flood the market so that nobody else could come in and and sell sell miners um it was it was a bad time for everybody but you know i uh, like i said I, I used that opportunity to kind of reinvent myself instead of doing internet marketing for people i was selling miners so i've been slinging miners for many years now and um you know, there's been ups and downs, I had different business partners. Some went well, some went, went uh, south. But, uh, you know, so I've, I've been in the process of rebuilding my company a couple of times. And uh, now these days we're actually into uh, media and events and uh, training. And, and uh, you know, so we, we have like a mastermind club that we do and a boot camp that, that we could talk about some more later. Uh, but just like really helping to raise up the next generation of bitcoin miners you know so that's that's what we're trying to do is help people to avoid the same mistakes that we've made and get their bitcoin mining farms built faster and cheaper and with less headache more efficiently than what we were able to do you know five six years ago when all you had was just like a few youtube videos and and maybe like some back channels of people that that you can you know ask advice from uh maybe on telegram right so oh my god yeah the industry has come a long way and you know my company has grown a lot with it and uh yeah i'm just happy to be here with you uh brian and uh love to talk about bitcoin and mining and uh maybe some hot rides too here <laughs> right 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 so um i mean it's like if for a person that's been in the industry as long as you have and seeing that you know you've seen the ins and outs with facilities uh, uh, coming up, making and breaking it. 
And, and it's like, and I'm not sitting here and t saying that, you know, everybody should be striving to have their own facility. Uh, because again, that's like, you know, it's, we all, me and you know, it's very capital intensive to, to get anything like that rocking and rolling. Yeah. But for like the average consumer um, that might be looking at going, you know what, uh, my, they, the electric company raised my rates. I'm now 15 cents a kilowatt hour, which is kind of the national average now across the U.S. You know, if you can get down to 11, 11, 12 cents a, a, a per kilowatt hour, you're doing OK. But that's still not the most competitive for people looking at like um, hosting facilities. I mean, like, do you have like experience with, with dealing directly with these hosting facilities? Right. And what are some of the things that. Um, a person that would be looking at a service like that should be watching out for like as a red flag. Yeah, those are some good questions. Yeah, you're, you're right. You know, your comment that you made first was, you know, building a Bitcoin mining farm isn't necessarily for everybody, right? You might not have the, the capital to do that uh, or you might not really have a good location, right? So like you're saying, the, the average might be around 15 cents if you're residential. You know, California is just ridiculous. I heard oh, they're, yeah. <laughs> they're like way even higher, right? So like, yeah, where you live might not necessarily be the right place to build your mind. Um, and and some people might want to do that, like, you know, keep things close to their their chest, right? And and not have to travel out like, you know, hundreds of miles to to visit their farm. So So yeah, that's where maybe hosting facilities come into play, right? And uh, yeah, so when I first started this, I, I was actually running like a small uh, hosting facility here in Wisconsin. It ended up, it wasn't really uh, feasible because like you're saying, the electric rates, um, you know, we were paying maybe eight cents on average uh, to the utility provider. And, you know, yeah, some month, and, yeah, some years, <laughs> well, yeah, it's not bad, but yeah, some years uh, it was feasible and some years it wasn't, right? Because as a hosting facility though, what we have to do is at least maybe mark that up by two cents just so that we have uh some profit coming in right yep. uh so at that point then it it really becomes less uh feasible to do as a hosting company so you really have to be targeting something like if you can get four cent power that elusive four cent power or five or six cents maybe then it becomes a little bit more feasible to take on clients right yeah i mean i i, I know of hosting companies out there that will take a single miner you know, person that has one or five miners, uh, and and you know they're more retail focused, and they're maybe even charging like 10, 12 cents per kilowatt hour. You know, like a, that's whatever. I don't know, a few hundred bucks per month per miner. If you're talking like a an S nineteen or an S twenty one, right? Right. And uh, you know, but that not it isn't necessarily uh, sustainable in the long run, right? So yeah, there there is that dynamic of the electric rates that you were talking about that definitely comes into play with mining, especially with hosting. And you really have to know what you're getting into, right? Uh, a lot of people will buy miners just to play with it. They, they're trying to figure out what is this Bitcoin mining thing all about? So they'll buy one, put it in their garage, put it in their basement. And then, you know, they, they uh, have a girlfriend or they have a spouse or something and their, their, their spouse isn't really as obsessed with it as, as you are. And, um, uh, they're like, get this thing out of my house. And so like you're saying, hosting companies, that's maybe where they can come in, right? Uh, so if you have one miner, you have a hundred or you have a thousand miners, you know, when you're talking like a thousand miners, you're talking more like co-location, right? It's a yeah. little bit different than all in managed hosting services where somebody's going to white glove, do it for you. Right. Uh, co-location might be something more like, uh, you have a thousand miners or you have a couple megawatts worth of miners and um you're you're trying to figure out hey how can i get these up and running without using my own capital uh you know to to build out the infrastructure well you can you can actually go in with somebody else's existing facility and maybe you can manage it yourself or you could maybe send some of your own team members there to to help uh co-manage it right so it's slightly different scenario there with with co-location but yeah you know yeah it's it's definitely an interesting industry to be in and uh there's all sorts of dynamics there to to learn about the differences between hosting and self-mining and you know e even like building a company so that you can provide those hosting services for somebody else like we, we actually help people to figure that business model out for themselves as well so like 
Like, like let, let's say, yeah, you do have land or you do have access to cheap power. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll teach people how to actually become a hosting uh, services provider. And then what that allows them to do is earn some more US dollars to use to be able to build up capital that they can then start filling over time, filling their own facility with their own miners instead of having to have that initial capital outlay right up front and be able to build your farm and fill it with, you know, millions of dollars worth of miners yourself. Right. Right. So, yeah, those are all things that we're we're into. So as like a, from a consumer, like like a, um, a, the end user side of things, looking for this stuff and, you know, it's like outside of like co locations, that one's actually like, in my opinion, the safer route to go, but you're having you're still having that capital up front. Uh, but like for yeah. somebody that's an at-home miner, you know, and they're just going, you know what, either I have to just turn my rigs off because I'm no longer competitive in the market the way it stands right now, or I have to find this other company. And, you know, it's like, what are some of the things that uh, uh, the end retail users should like know about before jumping on board with, a um a hosting facility that might have might run into issues you know and I, i'll throw one right throw shade yeah. right under the bus on one uh, uh compass mining comes mm -hmm. right to mind when i say something like that you know yeah, in the past they, they've had issues yeah i think they've uh, cleaned up their acts recently yeah they the have they have but i will I, you know it's like i know people that have you know they got burned you know especially with the russian location oh yeah for sure <laughs> Yeah. So like, like you're saying, you know, there are risks, right? You do have to educate yourself a little bit about this industry. Um, don't just trust, right? Like this industry is all about uh, verifying, right? But don't, it's like one of those things, how do you verify yeah. on on a, a hosting location, you know? Yeah. Because well, that's like a, a lot question. of that stuff is so secret Yeah. at the same time. A lot of these companies don't know, don't want you to know exactly where they're located, right? Or yeah. maybe, maybe there are some like shady and nefarious uh, actors in this industry. But yeah, so some things to look out for, for example, are, you know, people making promises maybe that they can't keep or, you know, maybe uh, they don't have the utility rate locked in like they thought they did, right? So like maybe th their power rate at the hosting provider might be locked in at a certain rate uh but there might be a clause in there that they kind of forgot about or you know conveniently didn't pay attention to and they were just kind of hoping that hey you know my my power is always going to be six cents no matter what you know for the next 10 years well most cases that doesn't happen that's not how it works you know the gas the price of gas goes up and down price of electricity goes up and down and you're constantly trying to arbitrage that um, so one thing to do is to ask those questions of, Hey, you know, what does your power contract look like? Is there the, uh, scenario that maybe, uh, my miners might have to go offline part of the, part of the day, uh, to curtail or to, you know, participate in a demand response. You know, am I going to have 99% uptime or am I going to be more like 90% uptime or, you know, things like, yeah, like how long is your power contract locked in at this rate? So, you know, if, if you're signing up for a, a two year contract and, and they, uh, you know, aren't going to be able to eventually afford their own power bill, <laughs> you know, and, and you're, you're paying them nine cents, they're paying their utility seven cents or whatever the spread is. Uh, you know, if all of a sudden now their power bill goes up, uh, because they didn't research it good enough or they, you know, we're, we're being shady and, and like, you know, just kind of hoping and praying that their power bill wouldn't go up. Well, that, that could be dangerous, right? So yeah. you always got to watch out for those things, you know, do your research by, uh, asking those tough questions. Hey, can I see an example of your power bill? Like what, how long is your agreement? Uh, you know, do you lease your building, uh, or do you own the property that, that the mine is located on? Right. So I've seen one circumstance where, you know, Bitcoin was was going crazy. Uh, everybody was excited, and all of a sudden, this one hosting provider uh, they had to kick all their customers out because the building owner wanted to end the hosting company's lease because they wanted to use the building owner wanted to use the entire property 
to do self mining for themselves. So that you know that was a really sticky situation where oh, wow. all, of a, all of a sudden Bitcoin is booming. Everybody has all their miners up and running in this facility, and you know they're finally making money, right? That's one chance to finally make your your ROI back, right? Maybe, maybe break even on on the the expense of your machines, and then all of a sudden they they gotta shut the miners down and ship them back to you because the person that's running the hosting facility didn't own the building or didn't have a solid enough lease on the property uh, to you know to to last throughout the years, so. There's all sorts of like potential gotchas like that, yeah. you know, to watch out for. And I mean, yeah, I, I could. Yeah, and I, I can't even I came into a pitfall. It's the reason why my facility shut. I, I shut mine down is that I was uh, I had a good solid lease. The lease agreement wasn't the problem. Um, it was because the building wasn't mine. I was really hesitant on really putting in the infrastructure for somebody else because it would have been all on me doing all the upgrades uh, for the entire right. thing. And the, you know, the, the owner is like, Hey, this is th this, we're not set up to do, uh, ho you know, doing any kind of data center. So when you leave, it's just a warehouse to me. Right. I have no interest in it being a data center when you leave. Yeah. It's like with the amount of, uh, cause like I was in Oklahoma city, so I was going after some decent power rates. <laughs> and, yeah, there, I mean, there, there's some like uh, opportunity zones down there. Oh my God. Yeah. And I was in one of them. And, uh, I, if I could, if I was able to build out, um, I was going to be able to lock myself in at right around 3.2 cents per kilowatt hour. Not bad for what yeah. kind of, for what kind of uptime? Um, I, I think I had to have like a, God, I think it was like a 10% containment. So I have 90% uptime. Right. <laughs> but you, you had to build out uh, to a certain scale, right? Or Yes, yeah, I had to, had to be, to as soon capital. as I locked that contract in, I have to fully kit the whole building out yep. and be ready to go. <laughs> so that, that would have been like, uh, give or give or take. I mean, I mean, this. I mean, people. This is real numbers out there. I mean, you're looking at said and done, just just south of a million dollars with all with with all the contracts contractors coming in to redo all the co the the electric updating for a um, a sub uh, a mini substation sitting outside of the building. I mean, people do not realize that you know you're a million dollars in in a blink of an eye, yeah. and you're just getting started. And you don't even have your miners yet. Yeah. <laughs> so just like the infrastructure. For, that, for that million dollars, just in this example, like, yeah, like from your experience, uh, how many megawatts might that get you? Like, so you're talking about one and a half. Yeah. One and a half megawatts retrofitting an existing warehouse, bringing in more power, uh, building out those transformers and, and maybe like even like a, a mini substation on, on the property. Right. And like putting the the racks, the power distribution, the switch gear, um, you know, networking, right? Yeah, like you're you're looking at like, yeah, Mikel, because Mikel was my business partner too. Um, he's like eighty percent was what they wanted with a ten percent demand, so the margin for error was like too thin. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, well, cool. I I thought, yeah, I don't know if I knew that uh, Mikel was was your partner on that. Um, but yeah, well, man, that that would have been awesome. But oh, we tried. I mean, it's like, it, it, like we as we were setting up, COVID hits, and yep. so I I had a million dollar investor that just disappeared with COVID, and I was like, and I I, I understood, you know, I could I I couldn't get mad at him because like he was worried about okay. Where is where is the economy going to be rolling from here? I've got to make sure that I I I'm safe with my assets that I currently have. Yep. It, I I can't I cannot get mad at the guy for that. It. That would uh, have been that would have been the absolute perfect time, right? Because like oh I mean, yeah, what, it's the hardest time though when everything is dropping, not just crypto, but like the entire yeah. economy and the entire world. It's the hardest time to double down and say now is the this time. This is now, go. and I tried to get it through to him. Yeah. I'm like. I'm like, right now, you were willing to do a mill. You should really do two mil right now. Right. Double down on this, and we'll be yep. sitting golden on the other side. Because, but. like, the potential <laughs> for things to go up, it, it's 
only going to go up, right? Like yeah. Bitcoin was at, well, I don't know, like five grand or something, right? I was telling all my friends, you need to buy, I don't tell my friends to buy Bitcoin. I don't tell them how to buy it, when to buy it. But that time during COVID, when, when everything was crashing, I was like, guys, Bitcoin is on sale, buy it now, right? Yeah. And at the same time, like Bitcoin miners were on sale too, right? And, uh, uh, you know, new and used transformers were, were on sale because yep. there wasn't that demand, right? Like everybody bought like dozens and hundreds of transformers to build out their, you know, gigawatts of, of power. And, um, all of a sudden nobody wanted to continue building out. So there's a lot of surplus equipment that would have been the best time out of <laughs> probably in the next, you know, 10 years or more to, to, to get into the industry. But like like we're saying it's the hardest time to get in yeah. right so you do have to have that free capital ready to go you do have to have the investors that are bought in to the long-term vision yep. and yeah it 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 takes a, a t team it takes confidence and it takes takes risk yeah and it was in a, and i have to like the guy i give him i give it up to him for willing to have even before covid like talking with me willing to step into it i mean the guy was like retirement age you know yep. and, and he's yep. willing to, to to take a risk because he was trying to help benefit his son and i was like I'm, i was just kind of blown away that he was willing to step into a technology that he knew a little bit about and you know and the technology is you know far beyond him and he is and the guy was just a, a an old polish welder owned owned a really big business doing well yep. doing all this nice welding and uh the, so i mean like he, he had some of the vision his son had a little bit more vision behind it and i know that's what the bigger drive was right. uh but yeah once 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 you know the the economy you know started kind of having an issue he reverts back to a person who had lived through a a depression and a, and a complete economic failure right. and they go into hoarding mode and they don't release any capital because that's what yep. they do. That that's what made allow them to survive. Yep. It's just go back to the the safety and and what's comfortable. And yep, yep. That's, I mean, that's what happens. And that's that's yep. partly what what uh, what causes these retractions in the economy in the first place, right? Like, yeah. it's not necessarily that the economy is collapsing. Uh, so let's be careful. It's it's people saying let's be careful that causes the economy to collapse. So it's like it's it's like what comes first right the chicken or the egg but and, and and talking about all these like little collapses and stuff with like companies like in the last few years watching um all these bigger mining facilities uh like uh, uh alex machinko or like uh, oh god uh, what the celsius guy yep. his mining facility getting shut down um and then you have and, and and he was kind of wrapped up with core scientific a little bit and that caused core scientific to have problems <laughs> yeah it it all comes <laughs> to it, it all affects yeah yeah but like like you're saying you know um being able to diversify spread out that risk right like when we were talking earlier about um the co-location and the hosting um you know when when we teach people how to build farms or how to do bitcoin mining you know what what we're trying to do is target business owners or entrepreneurs who are already savvy with business they understand how to make these types of decisions they already have potentially access to capital they have team members who might be uh good with electronics you know good with electricity whatever uh you know contractors or um you know it professionals right like it it, it takes a team so um so yeah i i guess where i was going with that is is uh yeah so we we really try to educate people on um how to do this in a way that is sustainable right so going back to that that idea of building out a facility so that you can become a hosting provider uh it really makes sense you know i mean some people they, they're just hey i just want to mine the corn i don't want to have to be responsible for like running a business right right they, they don't they don't like people they don't want to interface with other people they, they want to be maybe very private they don't want anyone knowing where the facility is but it just it just makes sense to try to de-risk 
and and to try to spread out that risk a little bit and and diversify, right? So uh, in, in doing that, if you if you look at it as hey, the company that owns the infrastructure can be one entity, right? The company that owns the miners could actually be a customer of that other entity. So you you might be able to even spin this into like two or three different uh, different entities or companies, right? If you're thinking about it as, as a business venture, you could have one, one business that already exists that has a lot of revenue where maybe you actually need expenses on your books so it doesn't look like you're so profitable. Uh, well, paying for the electricity that the miners consume is definitely an expense. That can make your company look less profitable really quick, um, you know. And then buying the ASIC miners, you can actually depreciate the miners uh, on your books. Uh, like three and that, years. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And and so that's like another expense that that you can make an existing business look like it's not doing, you know, as profitable. Uh, you know, so like it it just makes sense to like run these things as businesses and and try to find ways to de-risk it and. You know, going back to that, that, uh, you know, the different entities, you know, so, so one, one instance where I saw, like I, I was involved in, in Wisconsin here, what they did is there was a building owner, there was another entity that rented the building from the building owner. And then there was a sales entity that all they did was land the deals to get the hosting customers in. And then there was another company that was solely responsible for managing the miners and keeping them online and, and doing the operations, right? So like, it was kind of like a, like a hotel situation or like an Airbnb, right? Uh, where there's multiple different layers, uh, different companies, different entities so that you can um, take that risk away and, and diversify, right? So. Yeah. So yeah, you know it's it's really interesting when you look at Bitcoin mining from a a, a business perspective like that instead of just like hey, I want to plug in some miners and I just want to earn some coin uh, some some coin or some corn, um, you know. So that that's that's what we focus on a lot is those strategies to help people to uh, to really attack this as as a business venture. That's that's actually kind of an interesting setup to just kind of break it all every aspect of it down. You don't have to have hardly any any people on payroll at all. You're not you don't have to particularly deal with anything. Yeah. You don't have to do it all yourself. Yeah. Right, right. That that's actually a really interesting setup there. I I, I thought about like, you know, ha like farming out some of it but not like not every aspect of it that that's a kind of an interesting uh, setup in the long term on there i mean it then at that point it's just a matter of making it make sense in dollars yeah. dollar wise at the end of the day yeah like if if everybody can benefit somehow yeah uh, it, it could work out right so it, so long as not one person is getting too greedy Right. I think there's 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 space in there for every everybody to make money, especially if you can find something like, you know, where you're paying three or four cents electricity. Right. There there should always be room for profit there. Oh, yeah. um, you know, so like let, let's say if you're uh, building a, a Bitcoin mine on a gas and oil site, you know, there might be somebody that owns the land that the gas well is on. There might be somebody that owns the mineral mineral rights that might be different than the person that owns the land. Uh, you know, there might be people that are responsible for uh, drilling the oil. That's a separate company that comes in and, and then, you know, responsible for conditioning the gas. And then there might be somebody else that comes in and says, well, I own generators. You know, I, I own infrastructure that can uh, turn the gas into electricity, you know, and that that person that owns the the infrastructure might not even be the person that's going to be doing the Bitcoin mining. Right. So, so there's all sorts of different layers like that. And, <laughs> and if you play your cards, right. Um, there's opportunity for everybody to make money in doing something that they're already good at. So you don't necessarily have to become the expert in everything, right? Like if I want to mine Bitcoin on, on a gas and oil field, I don't have to become 
a, a landman. I don't know. I don't have to know how to operate a, a gas well. You know, uh, you can trust other people to to do that. Right. Um, and and if everybody can benefit somehow, you know, I think for the most part, people are happy. You know, they they stay in their lanes. They they do what they're good at. And then at the same time, you can also all learn from each other and and you know share knowledge and, and maybe build it bigger and, and better together in, in a in a second or third uh, venture, right? So so yeah, there's there's all sorts of cool possibilities out there like that uh, to to pursue. Oh yeah, and, and it's like and and a lot a lot of people think that you need to be backed up into. Uh, uh, uh strand areas where there's stranded power or cheap power and they're not realizing anytime that you drive down the highway and you see something on fire that that's energy that is wasted energy uh yeah. that that people could be sitting because like uh uh i talked to uh one of the guys on x uh, uh hoddle tarantula yep and the stuff that he does oh my god i i've been like going okay well if you if you're close enough to me let me know i will help you set up <laughs> i want to learn what you're doing <laughs> for sure yeah no I'm, I'm with another guy um daniel roger as well like he's yeah. a little bit more low-key uh i mean his, yes. his handle is um blue hills and um yeah he is like crazy he just He's constantly traveling in his little sprinter van, you know, going out and fixing generators and just like bootlegging it right the, the yeah. whole way. And then yeah, that, that's that's another whole business model in itself is is oh, just like finding these stranded energy, energy sources. Yep. Yep. And, and then um I, I've heard of it before, and then uh after talking with Peter, it, like it, it kind of like made me do a little more research. Um, but the uh those uh bioreactors right where you're basically just taking something that's going to be produced that, that that'll off gas something that you can burn or you can right. pelletize it to be able to off gas it and burn yeah so the these creative energy sources i mean that's really what i'm most interested in because what i'm finding is that you know the the big players out there you know they they're trying to get like a gigawatt two gigawatts 10 gigawatts up and running and they don't necessarily want to mess around with these small little pockets of stranded energy right right it doesn't make sense to them um so that's where maybe the little guys can come in and really benefit is because the little guy they don't mind uh getting a small generator and and trying to uh you know get like 50 miners up and running on a on a small little gas well in the middle of nowhere somewhere right um so so yeah like things like that uh other things that that we've been looking into recently are um um tire incineration well it's it's actually in this case it's not incineration it's like more digesting right so they take tires they heat it up to a certain degree it's not like burning it but it's it's melting it and they add in a certain catalyst um and bring it up to a certain temperature and they're, they're actually it's like a big stomach that's digesting uh these tires and turning it into other byproducts one of the byproducts is obviously rubber another one is diesel you can use that diesel you know to power different things on your property or you can even sell it uh and then the methane uh that's what you can turn into um into electricity through a generator right so yeah think things like that and then also you you mentioned bio but uh you know the um uh, you know biogas as far as you know there's a lot of pig shit and a lot of cow shit out there yep um you could turn that into into electricity definitely i i'd i'd love to be mining me <laughs> some corn from uh from pig shit as soon as as soon as peter like said something i'm like i've heard of it but i've just never seen it I've never thought of implementing it in the mining side of it and yeah i started looking into it and i'm like you know what there's a lot of farmers out there that they spray their fields to make sure there's beneficial grasses for their cattle to eat that's going to be the most nutrition yeah unfortunately this also renders their manure unusable to any farmer out there wow. that is not utilizing synthetic fertilizers to renutrient and and have plants that can handle poisoned ground Interesting. so basically the you know they they can use that uh, uh, manure that's been that has broadleaf pesticides on there onto 
feed corn. Why? Because feed corn is uh, GMO. So they don't, they can't serve GMO products to humans. Right. Hmm. So it's not, they can't, but they can't take that uh, uh, manure and put it into their sweet corn field because it'll kill off the entire field. Wow. So all the so now now you got an issue with a lot of a lot of cattle farmers that have cattle that stand a, in one spot for long periods of time. What do they do with all that manure that the farming industry cannot use? Right. Let's, so, let's pl plug those Bitcoin miners right into the butthole of that cow and freaking just mine and, it. And, and, right. And, and that's kind of what like I, I started looking down the rabbit hole on there, and I'm like, pelletized cow shit. <laughs> yeah. I want to like show you something. I, I'm going to present my screen. I want to show you something here. I think you might get a laugh out of this. Do you see this? Oh, uh, yeah. It'll so this take is, uh, four cows to power one uh, Bitmain uh, ant miner. <laughs> That's 19 or five cows. <laughs> so I, I made this calculator. I call it the calculator. Uh, so, um, basically, oh, that is hilarious. Like, hey, if I have a thousand pigs, you know, what can I do? So it says like uh, eight units of Ant Manor S1995T uh, can power, a th uh, be powered by a thousand pigs, right? And then you can say like, well, what, what would that gas be worth if I was just to sell it on the market instead, right? Or, or whatever um you know versus mining bitcoin with it so yeah i i, I call this my calculator because i was i was obsessed i was like i uh -huh. wonder you know how many cows would it take to power a bitcoin miner right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i thought you'd get a kick out of that oh that's hilarious hilarious because like oh my god yeah because like it it, it it and these farmers are paying to get rid of this right Imagine somebody walking up to them and being like, I'll pay for all of that, even though <laughs> nobody else can use it. <laughs> yep. No, and, and say, same with the tire industry, right? Like right now, I, like you, you have to pay to dispose of your tires, like a disposal right. fee. Um, yeah, it's like $3 in Illinois. Yeah, but imagine if people caught on to the fact that now like, these scrap yards can make money with these tires. If, if it caught on enough, people would start saying, hold on here. I'm not going to pay to get rid of my tire. I'm going to, you're going to pay me to take my used tires. <laughs> Cause if you're going to be able to mine Bitcoin and make a lot of money off of this, you know, uh, it, it, it could potentially turn the whole entire industry upside down. Right. Well, that would that would solve something in another country if somebody were actually to tap into that. Uh, what is it? Is it Indonesia that has the the largest tire graveyard? That, and, yeah, and, and it's on fire. <laughs> and actually, uh, Brazil. I was just talking to somebody yesterday, literally, about this. Um, because Brazil did not invest uh, much at all in their their rail their railways their their rail infrastructure they have to transport everything over um you know over the mountains and everything through uh f with vehicles and so they have uh tons and tons of commercial vehicles transporting things all throughout the country um so they have a massive massive stockpile of tires all over the country because they don't have rail like we do right um so yeah like literally something like this could turn a country like that completely upside down and, and, and create revenue models like they've never experienced before, you know? Oh, no kidding. And, and again, a lot of people don't realize a lot of these island countries, like the majority of their power, uh, I, I know it is for Costa Rica directly, um, that their electricity comes from a few big giant diesel generators. So their cost of electricity is through the roof because they've yeah. got to import the diesel in. Yeah, and interestingly, uh, you know, so you might have heard of Daniel Batten. Uh, he's been doing a lot of research recently on, um, you know, just just dispelling the fud, right, about Bitcoin mining and the environment. Uh, so he's he's put out a few reports and kind of debunked a lot of these, you know, different things that Greenpeace and other, you know, people have put out. Um, but he is dealing a lot with landfill methane gas, and yeah, so he's. Oh my God. I was just yeah. talking with this with my wife like two months ago. I wish she was yeah. here. <laughs> so, 
so yeah, you know, there, there are people that are partnering with landfills to, to like, uh, utilize that, that methane gas instead of burning it off into the atmosphere yep. or having to worry about hooking it up to, um, to like, uh, a distribution, you know, pipeline. Uh, yeah, just set up your Bitcoin miner on the landfill and, and burn that gas instead of putting it into the environment. And, uh, yeah, so like, you know, something like that could, could really help to, uh, you know, build things out, save the world, make people money and, uh, you know, spread the love. So, Oh yeah. I, I was looking at like we were, me and the wife were doing a road trip and we went past this gigantic landfill on the side of the highway, you know? And it's like, and as we go past, I, I saw four flaring tubes off of it. And I was like, like, I wonder what the potential energy output of that is. And yeah. the wife looked at me and she's like, oh, yeah, you're a miner. <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you on that. Yeah. but uh, It's like, yeah. how much can it really sustain? You know, it's like, what yeah. what is its true? And, and, and for a small just, little person, just math. you know, it's, just math, it's a right? small shipping container is all you need to put down. Exactly. Yeah, it, it just comes down to math. You know, you, you have, I mean, and it's so it, energy energy and and heat right it's, it's all correlated so like it comes down to btu um you know i've been talking to somebody recently about hey how, how can we use these miners to to heat a pool for example right and yeah so like it, it's it's all related how how many how many btu could you get out of this right so right. Like that, that's what some of the industry thinks about um you know if, if you're if you're going to reuse the heat uh, for for other purposes to like heat a pool or to heat a house or something like that, you know. And, it's, and it's funny oh, we dig into it. The math goes both directions uh, uh, unilaterally. Like mm -hmm. for every one watt, you're you're creating three point four two BTUs of heat. If you have three point four yep. BTUs of heat, you can create one watt. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. People don't and, realize and some that of them they are, are more. Like, efficient than others right like so like if it depending on the quality of the gas for example like if if you're trying to run a generator on on gas uh you know you're gonna have some efficiency uh, efficiency loss right. to, to heat because you can't turn it all into electricity because some right. of the byproducts is, is going to be heat right. uh but yeah i mean it's just it's just math right and, yep. and now we're able to to digitize this uh uh through through using bitcoin technology so but yeah, no, awesome. Um, but hey, it was great talking with you today. And uh, you know, I know oh, we yeah. have to wrap, wrap it up shortly here. But um, yeah, and any any last questions or, or comments for me? Um, no, no, no. It's, it's like other than uh, I love to have you kind of be. You know, it's like if you ever have time in the future, make you make you more of a regular up on here. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and same thing with Peter and Peter knows that I, I could pretty much grab Peter anytime I want. <laughs> He's our, I've already got to reset up another one because he was talking about after the, uh, the whole conference stuff oh, yeah. and everything that you guys were setting up. Um, and I, I guess that's like the last part. What is it that you, you and Pete, like Peter alluded that you guys are working on, on, on a project together. What do you guys got setting up? Yeah. So that's, that's exciting. You know, uh, yeah, you, you mentioned Peter and really that's, that's been great getting to know him. Uh, we're really just trying to launch our media division and, and, uh, you know, become a, like, like we like to say the, the gravitational center of the Bitcoin mining universe. Um, you know, it's, it's a lofty goal, but we want to be very well connected to everything going on in the industry. We want to help people to get exposure for their brands. You know, if, if they're a, a, an equipment provider or a service provider in the industry, we, we want to be the megaphone, uh, for those, those types of, of businesses. Um, you know, and then obviously we have our Bitcoin mining equipment brokerage in there as well. But the other thing that we haven't really talked much about is is the conference, right? So we have this conference coming up in the end of September in the North Woods of Minnesota. Um, not sure if you're going. I think uh, Michael is, is trying to come out. Um, he, I think he's already got a ticket. Yep, yep. Michael said he was going to be going. Yep. Um, <laughs> that's exciting. And um, But yeah, so this conference, you know, this is our third year coming up here and uh it's it's going to be very practical like you know, i i just like talking about the practical side of bitcoin mining right 
and, and teaching people like the nuts and bolts of it. So the conference is really going to be focused on uh, helping people to uh, figure out how to build their minds, operate their minds, manage their minds, maintain them more efficiently, right? And it's going to be a great time. So if anyone that's listening can come up to Minnesota for the last weekend of September, we're going to have a great time there. It's going to be relaxing. We're going to be cooking s'mores over the, the open campfire and, and just, you know, just relaxing, maybe do some hiking, camping, fishing, whatever, shooting some guns um and learning about bitcoin so on the friday that day um we're going to be doing a build a mind boot camp and it's our condensed you know really intensive one day boot camp uh just for people who are specifically in, interested in building their first industrial scale bitcoin mine and then the saturday is going to be you know all programming for the regular conference and then sunday is going to be a mining farm tour we're going to be touring a 25 megawatt Bitcoin mining farm up there in in Minnesota. It's the uh, the just just for crypto guys. So they uh, they have a company called Just for Crypto, and they have immersion cooling. They have air cooling in a warehouse. They have air cooling in uh, in containers. It's like all different types of mining going on up there that that you can check out. So we're really really excited about that. Yeah, and and you're talking about Peter. Peter's going to be there. He's going to be one of our key keynote speakers. Nice. And, and he's really been helping this the last few months on helping us to to build out this conference and to to make this uh, venture successful. So. Oh yeah, he is so passionate in in this industry. Um, I I think that man has onboarded thousands and thousands of people in the crypto. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Me included, you know, it's like back whenever he was doing uh, um, bite-sized crypto right. and uh, hit him and his buddy Chris were sitting there uh, building, uh, building off in this like little, little closet space in this industrial building. And, uh, you know, they're sitting there melting the paint off the walls with <laughs> GPUs and stuff. And he's sitting yeah. there, he's like, look here. I'm making a legal money printer. I'm like, you got my full attention. I'm like, you, you have me at legal money printing. I'm like, I'm not going to get in trouble for doing this. And I don't have to have anybody's permission. And, and this was like, you know, 2017, you know, markets crashing. Everybody's saying it's a scam. And here right. I am going, huh. This is interesting. <laughs> yeah. no, so it's, it's great being able to get to know Peter and, and work with him. Oh but, yeah. Uh, but yeah. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, so you can find us at BitcoinMiningWorld.com. Uh, and then on Twitter, I am Offered Scott. So just O-F-F-O-R-D-S-C-O-T-T. -T. Yeah, and if if you'd like to chat with me, find me online, you know, reach out. And we'd, we'd love to introduce you to some of our other communities that we're building on Telegram and, and whatnot. And uh, yeah, take it from there.